I'm really pleased to be here today. In a couple of days, this is for me the second time in the same arena in a different format. I would like to thank the Committee of the Regions uh, for organizing this conference uh, and for the very appropriate title that they have chosen for this year and for the excellent preparation of the event uh, to which uh, the Council Secretariat has been uh, quite uh, grateful to be able to uh, take an active part in uh, addition to other institutions. I'd like to also express my appreciation for the wide, wide variety of contributions that we've heard uh, during these two days here, um, uh, and uh, it only adds to the growing reputation of the event as becoming a brand onto itself. Uh, as I mentioned in the closing session of the meeting on Communicating Europe in partnership in the same venue two days ago, uh, communication is our primary responsibility and the commitment. We need to draw now lessons from this event, uh, from the impressive range of experiences and uh, the rich range of views that we have heard during these two days, each in our own uh, framework. And uh, when I'm saying drawing lessons, I really actually mean that. Uh, in my case, it means drawing lessons for the benefit of the three platforms that we are mostly involved with. Firstly, the Working Party on Information, which is a Council Working Party in which uh, the Commission, the European Parliament and the Council Member States, uh, EU Member States, convene. Uh, we will identify issues that we can take forward on that uh, arena and uh, then uh, follow it back uh, to uh, here next year, but also in the meanwhile in our collaboration with the Committee of the Regions. The second area, uh, the Council Secretariat is also the Secretariat for the Club de Venice, which uh, brings together the governments and the communication directors for informal gathering. I'm very pleased to see here Stefano Rolando, the honorary president of the Club de Venice, here with us, who will be opening the annual meeting of the Club de Venice in a month's time. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that we will be, uh, uh, he will have not only listened attentively to the uh, interventions here, but also we will be taking stock of many of these things that we can bring together with the governments and their communication experts uh, institutionally. And thirdly, uh, the gathering that we are also uh, co-chairing uh, on rotational basis with other institutions, including Committee of the Regions, which is the Interinstitutional uh, Committee on Information. And uh, there are many points that we would like to follow as well. Uh, success always depends on what kind of issues you identify how you are inspired by others how you allow yourself to be inspired by others and, and what kind of concrete action you are then ready to take within your own competencies um, all my lifetime that i'm working in the european Co union and in different related activities i think uh, the common denominator for many years of communication activities has been that we've heard many many big words but the actions have always been taken in small doses and steps. But maybe it is that those small steps and small actions are the ones that are most lasting and can actually change things uh, in the bigger world as with our own institutions. And therefore, in a couple of words, I would like to concentrate on some of the very concrete things that on the basis of my colleagues who have been here, we have picked up as issues that we would like to follow with other institutions during the next year to come. Um, the first issue, I think, the first lesson from us that I would draw on is in the context, well, actually, I'm looking at the audience here, and I see a lot of young people. I see also a few still, uh, respected colleagues of my generation, experts. Some of us were born with paper. Some of us actually used a typewriter. Uh, and we have made a successful bridge uh, to online communications. We have to learn from you. In our case, one of the most dominating uh, transformational changes uh, for the next year will be the move from websites to an integrated online working environment. It's not just a change of language, it's a really change that penetrates deeply into how our organizations individually work and how we collaborate, if at all, with each other. We are, for example, contemplating at the moment through an open public procurement what kind of content management system we are going to give for the European Council, for the Council and for the Eurogroup 
for the years to come. That kind of a decision should not be taken in full respect of the financial regulation in a vacuum or in isolation with other institutions. We have to collaborate, we have to discuss, because what the benefits that we can reap from that kind of discussions go far beyond our internal institutional disputes and walls. We all know what kind of websites that we have, and sometimes we are a bit jealous to each other of the kind of brilliance that others have had. I followed very keenly what the Commission of late has been doing, and I think that we are both quite uh, jealous of the things that the European Parliament has been managed to push forward over the past year or two. Yet on the level of editorial governance, we don't really work together. We don't really cooperate. We have a Europa a framework portal, but it doesn't have a proper editorial governance. There is no means that we could actually push for a decision on what are the common messages and how we could then send them forward and how to best work in that context vis-à-vis -vis the citizens that we all seek to persuade. Are we going to develop on the base of sites or are we moving towards portals? If we move towards portals, how do the institutions then interact with each other? Our sites have been organized from the point of view of our administrations, how we are internally organized, what competencies each of us have, and the citizen couldn't really care less. If it's a piece of legislation thereafter, they get immediately lost from the time when the Commission pushes it out. It enters into a discussion in the, committee, or in the, in the different committees in the Parliament and in the Council, and then it returns miraculously on average three years later as a piece of transformed legislation that will have an impact on their lives. And how do we communicate that? We need to develop our maturity to discuss those things together. Analytical tools. A lot has been said here about uh, social media. I don't think, uh, if I put together the kind of events when I've listened to different the private sector consultants on the development and importance of uh, analytical tools over the years, I've lost count. But they're all similar to one extent. They all tell us how brilliant these analytical tools are and they are almost, uh, without exception, unable to tell us how to apply them to a public institution. Uh, how should we apply them? What are the work processes? On the level of a person that works in a publication unit and in charge of publishing a, 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 a brochure about this event, should that person know immediately upon publication of the web how many people read it? on the level of base views, where did they come from? How far do we know about them? Did we hit the right audiences? Is 10,000 a lot? Or is 1,000 better if you knew who they were? They are difficult questions, but I don't think that anybody has really the wisdom. We really be, need to be to develop the platforms where we can work together. The second point, from abundance to austerity, from one A to another. I wouldn't say that any one of us has really enjoyed abundance when it comes to financial resources or human resources in communication, but in the years past, uh, comparatively, yes, we did. We are heading into years where each one of us has to justify our actions and our expenditure in a manner that hasn't been done before, and for some of us, it might be even a question of justifying our very existence. Why do we communicate? Who says we are the ones who need to communicate the Europe to the citizens? Where is it written? What is the reason why we should do it? And if we do it, what is the added value? How do we get to you 30-year-olds and below? It's not just big words, it's the small steps and actions. So from here on, the action that we would like to take forward during the next year with the other institutions and them permitting and then working with us is opening up the budget process. I mean, there is no explicit legal basis anywhere in the treaties for institutions' communication activities. And consequently, all of us are doing our own, but none of us really know how much money we are using to that effect. No one knows. I know pretty much what I do, but I don't know what the member states are doing. In the Commission, I can ask my colleague, the DG Com, and he will tell me how much they would use, but I'm not sure whether he would be able to tell how much the Commission entirely uses and to what end. 
what are the priorities? How do we prioritize in the age of austerity our communication activities? How do we compare our activities? And are we able to compare notes and plans at the level of the budgetary process before the banners are spread on the streets, on the territories of the member states that still constitute the audiences, before the trucks hit the streets and the market squares, before people in the streets get to see how 2 million euros was spent or divided with, between 27 countries. You have to aggregate, you have to share, you have to start that. We are all coming towards the end of the year. By end of January, we will all have to submit our budget for 2014, the year of the elections, the year of the citizens, really. Are we able to plan together a bit? And what would be the good reason not to? I'm eagerly waiting for hearing that. Final point, um, I haven't heard John Bell speak yet. In fact, I think that I've never heard John Bell speak, but I've heard of him, and I'm eagerly waiting for his words. What I did see from the web is something about apples and oranges. And I have to spit, uh, admit that I, for one, am quite inspired by, 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 by that analogy. Apples do speak to oranges, and oranges can listen to and understand what apples are saying. But it takes an effort. And for those of you who think that my remarks are cryptic, I only say that, look him up. Uh, uh, apples, governments, public institutions, oranges, private sector, or vice versa. So we can actually learn from each other. We can learn from uh, the words that he wrote, where he said actually that we need to agree that too often government communication experts see their job as unique. It's quite a twisted thought, isn't it? Because the governments were elected by people and the governments appoint us. Consequently, we become unique in our ability to talk to the citizens. It doesn't really work that way. I think I belong to an elite. I'm employed by a bureaucracy. I work in bureaucratic manners, and so I should. Otherwise, I'll be wasting the responsibility that is given to me by the government and the people. But it doesn't mean that we cannot be effective. It doesn't mean that we can't learn from the lessons of the private sector. And today, it's more important than ever to pay attention to what happens in the private sector. You mentioned in your, in your, in your text that uh, you mentioned quite a lot of interesting things in that respect. Uh, how startups are in making innovations, how non-governmental institutions are able to spread out to wide audiences, how new things pop up uh, from the heads of people like you every day. Some of you may become rich within the next year. And what we cannot afford to do as public communicators is we cannot be copycats. Otherwise, that's the only thing that we are going to do. We have to find and identify from your discussions, from your innovations, from what is happening in the, in the private sector, the common strands of experience that we can apply to our own work that have horizontal meaning. Some of them are technological, from web sites to online integrated working environment. Some of them are financial ability to cooperate at the times of austerity across institutional divide and plan together what is that we want to do. And some of it is merely common sense to each our own. We have to focus on what our core activities are and for the rest work with each other. Thank you. <laughs>